Welcome to Hatman Strats Back Daily Boxing News. Shane McGuigan is the former trainer of Daniel Dubois. And in an interview he did with Sky Sports this week, he was asked what Daniel Dubois' best punch is. Now, most people are going to say his jab, because he's got a very solid jab, or his right hand. But Shane McGuigan said no. It's his left hook. And he pointed out that this is a punch he did a lot of damage with against both Philip Hergovic and Jarrell Miller. He said it's surprisingly fast. He can be sneaky with it. And he switches it from head to body. And we certainly saw that in the Miller fight. Now, AJ has a very good left hook as well. But ever since the Andy Ruiz defeat, he seemed reluctant to use it because it's when he was exchanging left hooks with Ruiz that he got caught with one himself and unraveled. So he uses it very sparingly these days. For my money, AJ's left hook is actually better than Dubois' left hook, both as a lead and as a check hook. Although I'd say Dubois' left hook to the body is better than AJ's left hook to the body. Shane McGuigan said that Dubois is a tremendous gym fighter and that during the time he spent with him, they never managed to actually replicate his gym form in the ring in a professional fight. And Shane McGuigan has constantly talked about Daniel Dubois' confidence or lack thereof being a hindrance to him. But in his last two fights, of course, he's come through the fire and that has to give him tremendous confidence. Surely Dubois is at the most confident he's ever been in his career thus far. Be that as it may, despite all of the praise from Shane McGuigan, his former coach, as far as his attributes, his hidden talents, his ramrod jab, clubbing right hand, and his underrated left hook, McGuigan is still picking AJ to beat him. That's interesting, right? Bear in mind, last I checked, McGuigan still trains Daniel Dubois' sister, Caroline Dubois. Now, when McGuigan was quizzed about Dubois' left hook being his best punch rather than his jab, he said that, yes, Dubois got a very powerful jab, but he often overcommits with it. So I guess McGuigan's not just talking about from a power perspective, he's talking about from a technical perspective. He seemed to imply that the jab makes him vulnerable actually. And one thing we know that Anthony Joshua is very good at is counter-punching. We saw him counter Francis Ngannou very successfully in his last fight over his jab. That's how the second knockdown occurred. He's lightning fast with that right hand over the jab. And so Daniel Dubois needs to be careful not to overcommit with it. Yes, he'll want to do damage, but AJ's the taller guy. And judging by what I've seen in previous AJ fights, when he's fighting somebody that's got a good jab, he likes to stay outside of the range of that jab. He likes to move around and let the opponent work work to try and get to him. We saw that even way back in the days against Klitschko. He tried to stay out of the range of Klitschko's jab. Not particularly successfully, but that's what he was attempting to do. Klitschko, for my money, had a more accurate jab, a more cultured jab, and just a better jab all round than even Daniel Dubois. Better footwork than Dubois, for my money, as well, even at the age of 40. When AJ fought Robert Hellenius, he also tried to stay outside of Hellenius's jab, although, again, it did catch him and rock his head back a few times, so he wasn't particularly successful on that occasion, but Hellenius is a very tall man at least 6'7". Daniel Dubois is a much shorter man. In AJ's last fight against Francis Ngannou, same thing again. Ngannou was trying to get his jab off and Ngannou, by the way, had a longer reach and longer arms than Anthony Joshua. And he was aggressive. He was coming in, he was trying to get his jab on, he was trying to throw that hair trigger left hook and AJ was just staying on the outside, letting Ngannou do the work and then looking to capitalize on his mistakes when he's overreaching or throwing punches from the wrong range. And that game plan worked perfectly against Ngannou. And Ngannou's best punch, of course, is the left hook. He showed it a bit too much, so AJ recognized the pattern and was able to block it and stay away from it. But still, Ngannou was letting that left hook go aplenty. So if Daniel Dubois' best punch actually is his left hook, well, AJ's had some decent practice, defended against that punch in his last fight against Ngannou. And of course, AJ does have a history of being troubled by that punch. The first time we saw him hurt as a professional was by a left hook from Dylan White. Then there was the left hook against Andy Ruiz, of course. Alexander Usyk, who's a southpaw, caught him with some southpaw lefts. So perhaps AJ is vulnerable on that side, but again, against Ngannou, he shut that punch down. He'd gone through a whole training camp preparing to defend against that punch. Also, the last time AJ and Dubois sparred, as I understand it, was the occasion where Dubois hurt AJ, and again, it was a left hook, apparently. So surely AJ will be looking out for that once more. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section below. Are you surprised to hear Shane McGuigan, the former trainer of Daniel Dubois, saying that his left hook is his best punch, not his jab or his right hand? And also, what do you make of him picking AJ to beat Dubois? Especially given the fact he still trains Daniel Dubois' sister Caroline last I checked. Drop it all in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. I'm out.